Welcome to Cooking 100 Year Old Recipes. I'm so excited about this video that I'm filming for you. I saw this menu and what really got me excited was I've either already made some of the dishes on the wedding menu or I've seen them in the book that I cook from for this channel and I just had to make a video and dig into some of the other things on the menu and just a little bit of history about the couple getting married. President Ulysses Grant and his first lady wife, they were very aware that they had a attractive and vivacious young daughter, and this could potentially prove to be a problem with the press and Americans being curious and we're very oh transparent about our presidents because they're voted in office. We feel like we have a right to know what's going on in their lives and the daughter having such a grand personality would have been pursued. So they thought it best to send her on a tour of Europe and of course she would be presented to Queen Victoria, where else? Buckingham Palace. She then went on to be wined and dined around Europe and on her way home on the ship is where she met her fiance. The man Nellie fell in love with on the boat ride home is, well, was a diplomat and son, not son, nephew of an American actress. Now you can see how this would be very exciting to a spirited, curious young lady, fresh off a tour of Europe. And wild hearts will not be tamed. So the parents gave her a wedding and they were determined to make it be the wedding for the ages. The bride wore a gown of white satin edged in Brussels lace. A crown of orange blossoms held her tulle veil to her head, and she carried a bouquet of tuberoses and orange blossoms. In the center, a cluster of pink rosebuds, and centered in that was a small flag with the word love printed on it. First thing we see on the menu are snipe and woodcock served on toast. If you're not familiar with these, these are two small, very similar looking game birds with long bills and they are delicious for eating. Serving them on toast would have made it very convenient to eat an awkward bird, you know, a little tiny size where you can't be picking at it with your fork and knife. You really need to pick up your hands and you would absolutely not do that at a formal event such as this. So serving it on toast would have been it allows guests to enjoy the delicious flavor without the social faux pas. Next on the menu, also served on toast, is soft shell crabs. Now, the date of the wedding is later in the month of May, and if you're not familiar with American geography and where the White House is located, it's very, very close to Maryland, and Maryland is known for its crabs. This would have been molting season, and there would have been soft shell crabs very readily available. When you think about serving them on toast, this is a more, oh, a polite way of eating things that are a little bit awkwardly shaped. Now in a past video or two, I talked about the popularity of jellies during the Victorian era, and there's certainly jelly food on this menu. And one of the more popular savory dishes would have been jellied beef tongue. You may have seen a beautiful copper Victorian mold of a relative of yours, a parent, a grandparent, and depending on your age, maybe you still have some that have been handed down and you like to display them. The tongue was served in aspic, and aspic isn't just gelatin. It's a very savory combination of white and brown stock, herbs and spices, and even some wine. This would have made an extremely flavorful aspic to go around the beef and served as a salad course, and it would have been so delicious there probably would have been not a bit left over. 
Another dish on the menu is very familiar to people who watch the channel. In my Christmas menu, I made chicken croquettes with green peas, and that's also when I had a jelly served because I served it with recommended wine jelly and a cream sauce. It was absolutely delicious. I would have been happy to eat it at this wedding or any other special holiday that it was served to me. I want to look at the wedding cake. Queen Victoria herself is the one who kind of made the white wedding cake a thing because prior to that white wedding cakes were not and she also introduced the idea of a white wedding dress and I have found some wedding dresses of the Victorian era very specific to this time period of Nellie Grant that she might have chosen for herself. Now the cake itself would have been decorated very ornately in sugar work and the bride specifically wanted doves, roses, and wedding bells on her cake. And the cake inside might surprise you, but wedding cakes at this time were a fruit cake of sorts. It was a brown molasses batter with sultanas, raisins, dried citron, and to make it extra special in Gilda the Lily, there may have been brandy and melted chocolate added as well. So you've got this beautifully iced white cake and when you cut it open, it's this deep rich color. Should have been quite striking. If you're enjoying this content, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you'd like to subscribe, I'd be happy to see you again. Dried fruit would have been very special at this time and I made a frozen pudding back when I was working on the Christmas menu just a few months ago where I soaked several different fruits to put in the homemade ice cream. The result was something decadent, festive, and very delicious. Strawberries and cream are also on the menu, and this pairing goes back for centuries. If you can imagine the wedding buffet lined with pillowy bowls of whipped cream dotted with jewel-colored strawberries would have been quite striking and very inviting in the beautiful springtime weather. Ice cream and ices are another dessert item on the wedding menu. And this also reminds me of that frozen pudding, but I also made last summer something called frozen chocolate, which is a lighter version of chocolate ice cream. And I just loved it because it didn't have that heavy cloying fat of traditional ice cream, so I really could taste the clean chocolatiness. The wedding guests would have been offered punch, coffee, and chocolates to finish their meal. <laughs> 